is Stephen Zofi. I'm the Director of Choral Activities here at the University of Puget Sound. And before we begin this piece, uh, I'd like to offer you a little bit of context. Uh, I feel like there should be a warning label somewhere on your program that says, be careful, heavy emotion and graphic lyrics about to happen. And I don't mean that flippantly. The poetry that inspired this piece is taken from a Iraq War vet, Brian Turner, award-winning poet, and it graphically describes his experiences in combat as well as his struggles with understanding and processing that experience and his struggles to reintegrate into society afterward. When the composer uh, began writing this piece, he reached out to a number of combat veterans to learn their stories. There was a lot of research and writing and, and reading of their stories. And his hope was to create something that would do two things. One would be to create a space for healing and for reintegration for those folks who've had to experience the horrors of war, as well as create a space for the community around them to talk about this, to engage in it, to be part of a community of compassion around these stories. It's been a difficult road for us uh, rehearsing this, this piece. It's not been easy to deal with the emotions and the, the graphic images and the very jagged, sometimes angry music that you'll hear. Uh, but I think it's been well worth the effort. The music that you're going to hear is in three parts. The, like a uh, ritual, the beginning starts with a transition stage into something, a gate into another experience. And you'll hear that with the text, the required chants at the very beginning. The middle section is in three sections as well, and they are the hear bullet section, which is a graphic representation of being in combat. The second section called Phantom Noise, and the choir sings, you, I hear this ringing, ringing. It has to do with the soldier's experiences after being back with PTSD, flashbacks with memories. The third section talks to the moral questions of what it means to kill. Finally, the third section of the piece, again, we hear the choir chanting the same text you heard at the very beginning, but this time transformed musically as we hope there's a transition for, for that person back into society, back into uh, acceptance and dealing with this emotional injury of what we call war. The this is, as I said before, this is not an easy piece, but I hope that, like the composer intended, that it will engender a sense of compassion and a sense of community and a questioning of what this experience was all about. I want to thank Dave Wright and my uh, fellow um, panel members, even though I was just there to, I think, as window dressing, musical window dressing, uh, uh, Mike and Jennifer and Kelly for your thoughts and comments and your sharing of your experiences. That is very, very needed. And I also wanted to give a shout out to uh, the composer who could not be here tonight, Jake Winstead. However, he is watching from Minnesota. So Jake, I hope we, uh, hope we do a little bit of what you set out to do with this piece.
I'll tell you their major, uh, a little bit about what they're going to do next year. You're welcome to whistle or cat call for each one, but let's hold the applause. <laughs> Appropriate cat calling. No, no fun calls, please. Uh, and then we'll hold our, our big round of applause until all 12 of them have been mentioned. So I'll just go in alphabetical order. So Matthew Bogart on trumpet. Matthew <laughs> is completing a degree, degree in computer science with a minor in mathematics. And he'll be moving to Pleasanton, California, in quotes, the East Bay area, in August to work as a software application developer for Workday. Yes, it's a weird company name. And before he starts work, he'll be looking for as many adventures as possible. We have Over in the Harps, Rosalie Boyle. She has spent her time at University of Puget Sound double majoring in politics and communications with a minor in music. She has been hired by seafarers worldwide where she'll be spending her gap year for law school, creating patents for new technologies. In the violins, Larissa Pryor. Did I say it right for your Pryor? Yes. <laughs> She's from Port Townsend, Washington. She will graduate with a Bachelor of Music in Violin Performance and a minor in German. Next year, she will teach private violin lessons in Gig Harbor while completing coursework towards a career in health and nutrition with plans to become a registered dietitian. Andy Van Hoyt on trumpet. Andy is graduating with a dual major in computer science and Chinese, a minor in German, and a slight but perceptible ringing in his ears from extended exposure to the trombones during all or one. <laughs> After graduation, he plans to return to the San Francisco Bay Area where he will search for programming jobs as well as for an orchestra half as, one as, half as good as the one he can do in high school. Playing with the University of Puget Sound has been a privilege like no other, but he leaves with a lingering regret that he has not heard a single reference, they wrote these by the way, with not a single reference to the Princess Bride in the dashing Wesley Schultz. <laughs> graduate school in one of those domains in Berlin. <laughs> also in the bass section, Jesse Curris. <laughs> Jesse's graduating with a BA in music and a minor in computer science. And after graduation, Jesse plans to continue freelancing in the Tacoma area, hopefully find a few bass students, pursue independent software and web design, and work on a portfolio of compositions to apply to grad school for composition and theory. <laughs> in the viola section, Melissa Mayard is graduating with a degree in music education and a German minor. Melissa plans to return to Puget Sound for the Master of Arts in Teaching program after spending a year in Hamburg, Germany, teaching English as a Fulbright scholar. <laughs> She is deeply grateful for the wonderful experiences, new perspectives, and many friendships that have come here from her time at Puget Sound, especially from within the school music, and she looks forward to returning in the fall of 2018. Mishtaf. <laughs> Again in the viola section, Sarah Mueller. Sarah Mueller is graduating with a degree in biology and a minor in chemistry. And after graduation, she plans to find a job as a field or research technician for a year, and then apply to graduate school in avian conservation. Back in the clarinets, Cameron Stedman. Cameron is graduating with a degree in music education, and next year he will continue his studies at the University of Puget Sound in the Master of Arts in Teaching program. In the violin, Sarah Tucker. Sarah Tucker is a native of Portland, I'm sorry, of Port Townsend, Washington, and is graduating with a BA in Chinese language and culture and international business. After graduation, she plans to travel and seek a career in marketing and advertising. Back to violas, Forrest Walker. Uh, Forrest, is, 
Horace, in addition to being a uh, violist and principal violist, he's also been our orchestra manager, who sets the stage, manages the music, and harasses the students when I ask him to. So <laughs> thank you, Horace. Horace is graduating with a degree in viola performance, and next year he will study at the University of Oregon, where he will work as a teaching assistant for the viola studio while working on a master's in viola performance. <laughs> and back to Horace, Francis Walsh. Francis is graduating with a degree in molecular and cellular biology with an emphasis in bioethics and a minor in music. Starting this fall, she'll be shipping her heart to Maryland and working in a lab at the National Institute of Health as a post-baccalaureate researcher for two years. She then plans to attend graduate school to pursue a PhD in molecular biology. <laughs> Would all of our seniors please stand and be recognized?